there are seven sacraments in the Catholic Church. Out of those seven sacraments, there's one sacrament that most Catholics don't like to use in their lives, and the sacrament of confession. I have a lot of people tell me they just, uh, they, they just get nervous when they have to go to confession, so at all costs, they avoid confession. Well, it turns out to be that all Catholics, all non-Catholics, all human beings are going to confession every day, whether you like it or not. Because when people look at you, they're watching you, they're watching how you walk, what you say, how you act, how you react, and they're making an assessment about you based upon how you are. So you're always going to confession. Matter of fact, when you walked into the church tonight, and there are probably people already in a pew when you walked in, if someone looked at you, they were watching you. And they watched to see how you entered your pew. Did you walk down the aisle and make a nice genuflection, reverent genuflection of the tabernacle? You went into your pew, you're low with their kneel and offer a prayer? If you did, they made an assessment about you. They had an opinion about you, although they didn't share it with you, but they said, well, that's really nice. Or did you simply walk down the aisle and scoot in the pew real fast and never made a genuflection? And if you did that, guess what? Those watching you made an assessment about you because we go to confession all day long. Everyone who sees you has a thought about you. Well, it turns out to be the key point of today's gospel reading. Now, the gospel comes out of the 8th chapter of Mark, verses 27 to 35. What we want to look at is verse 27. Let's take a look at verse 27. In verse 27, it says this, again, the 8th chapter of Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the village of the Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Now, here's what's happening. At this point, Jesus is at the halfway point of his mission appeal. As he's traveling throughout the Mediterranean area, he already handpicked his 12 disciples, so they're out preaching the message of Christ. Jesus Christ himself is out there preaching the message of Christ. But he wonders, what do people think about me? How am I coming across? Do people like what they see, they like what they hear, they like the way I dress, they like the way I comb my hair? Are people captivated by me, or am I turning people off? You see, Jesus realized this. I, I got asked that powerful question, who do people say that I am? Because if people don't like the way I'm acting, I can change now rather than changing later. Now, Jesus was not going to sacrifice the content of his message, but he realized if I, the messenger, which is him, has to change in the way he's doing things, then he'd be willing to make the change. Now, he asked that powerful question. Now we're going to take a look at the answer. So we're going to look at the second half of the 27th verse, and we're going to move in to verse 28. Let's take a look at that. There it is. So it's a setup. Who do people say that I am? And the answer the disciples give Jesus is, they said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, to others one of the prophets. You see, Jesus had to say to himself, the smile on his face, wow, then I'm doing things right. Because when they said to Jesus, look, Jesus, people aren't sure who you are. They think it might be John the Baptist, the great precursor of Christ. They think it might be Elijah, the great Old Testament prophet. They think you might be one of the prophets. They don't know who you are, but they know this much, Jesus. You belong to a group of admirable men. The way you carry yourself, the way you speak, the way you talk, the, what, what you laugh at, they're watching you, they're making an assessment about you, you're confessing yourself to them, and they like what they see, and they like what they hear. Now, what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with you? Now, think about it. Every one of us are confessing who we are to others. And one thing that people will really make an assessment about you when they watch you, your co-workers, your family member, a stranger over community market, over John Eagle, at all these. When you're there and a person overhears your conversation, they're going to make an assessment about what you laughed at. Do you laugh at pure good humor? Do you laugh at ignorant, ugly humor? And if you do, they're, they're thinking about what that means for you. They're going to make an assessment about you. Would you have the courage, and this becomes a challenge for tonight and for the rest of our lives, do you have the courage to walk up to someone you know and ask the question, who do people say that I am? What do people really say about me? Now, you might pick someone safe and ask your mom. 
Oh, they think you're the sweetest little thing. <laughs> now, you all know people who don't have any filters. I know people who don't have any filters. They just, they just say what's on their mind. And there's people who don't have any filters who just tell the truth. They just put it right out there. Like it or not, I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it. Walk up to one of those people. Walk up to someone you know that doesn't have filters, is going to tell you the truth, and not going to worry about hurting your feelings, and ask them the question, who do people say that I am? What do people think about me? In my town, in my church, at the workplace. And be courageous enough to do what Jesus did. Jesus asked the question, and then what does he do? He hangs around long enough to hear the answer. Now that's the courageous part. Now, personally, I never ask anyone the question, who the people say that I am. Why? Because I, I don't want to know the answer. But that's a powerful thing to do. And if you ask someone that question, someone who doesn't have a filter, someone's going to tell you the truth about you. You see, you might not like going to confession in the Catholic Church, but that is unfortunate because what I can offer you in a confessional is what your neighbor can offer you as you confess who you are to them by how you act. The confession of the church offers you forgiveness. Your neighbor does not. Now, if you ask your neighbor, who do people say that I am, they, they might say, and to your pleasant surprise, they might say, everyone around here, you know, at work, they all think you're gracious, you're kind, you're compassionate, you do nice things for other people. Or they might say to you as they look right at you, do you want to know the truth? And you might say, mm, yeah, tell me the truth. Well, people say, Yo, you're mean. People say you say mean-spirited things. People say because the way they, they listen to you, they learn about you by what you speak, they think you're ignorant. They think you lack compassion. That's, that's a courageous thing. That becomes a challenge for all of us. Now, you could be sitting there tonight. Not that you have to ask anyone, who do people say that I am? There's a really good chance you know the answer to that question before you even ask the question to someone else. But for yourself, I'm not talking about your neighbor, but yourself. Just think about it. If you walked up to someone that you know, and hopefully might tell you the truth, and you ask the question, who do people say that I am? There's a real good chance you know the answer to that question before they give you the answer. We are going to confession all the time. But what we say, how we act, how we react, and most importantly, what we laugh at really speaks volumes about us. I'll leave you with this little, little jingle, this little poem, and then we'll continue on with Mass. You could tell on yourself by the friends you seek, by the very manner in which you speak, by the way you implore your leisure time, by the use you make of a dollar or a dime. You can tell what you are by the things you wear, by the spirit in which your burdens bear, by the kind of things in which you laugh, by the records you play in your phonograph. You tell what you are by the way you walk, by the things in which you delight to talk, by the manner in which you bear defeat, by so simple a thing as how you eat. By the books you choose from any shelf, in these ways and more you tell in yourself. So there's really no particle of sense in an effort to keep up any false pretense. You tell in yourself by the examples you set. Just remember that. Remember that although you might not like going to confession in the Catholic Church, you're going to confession every day of your life. People look at you, they watch you, they listen to you, they see what you talk about, what you laugh about, they're making an assessment about you of the kind of person they think you are.